the next topic that we are going to discuss is the very important topic of change control whatever we have learned so far under the subject of industrial pharmacy one thing is very obvious that in the pharmaceutical environment strict compliance to the approved policies procedures is essential to keep the manufacturing packaging and testing in a state of control any uncontrolled change or deviation can affect the safety and reliability of the product as well as the regulatory status thus directly or indirectly affecting the health of the public and safety which is why it is always necessary to control the change that is brought into the system this change is typically an intended move from an existing state to a new state why is it necessary to understand and control the change the reason is that one of the top 10 fda 483 and warning letter citations is generally for inadequate change control so whenever there is an inspection by the us fda most of the non compliances are related to improperly documented or unauthorized change controls change control is one of the aspects that re, that receives a detailed scrutiny during every fda inspection and what the fda inspectors do is that they review the change control documentation to determine whether the change that has been implemented has adversely affected the product or the process or equipment or facilities in any way thus change control is a very important aspect that we are going to look into detail by now so what exactly is change control many a times a company may need to make changes to the process or procedure for reasons that may uh, be uh, a fundamental legal requirement scientific or technical reason business con constraints or other reasons companies may have to redefine or enhance or amend or cancel requirements so whenever a change any sort of change as described above is made to the process or procedure it has to be reported by a change control procedure and it has to be approved by the appropriate authority okay the european guidelines gmp guidelines state that significant change control includes significant amendments to the manufacturing process including any change in equipment or materials which may affect the product quality and or the reproducibility of the process the gmp eu gmp guidelines define change control as a formal system by which qualified representatives of appropriate disciplines review proposed or actual changes that might affect the validated status of facilities systems equipment or processes okay let us just understand these words a formal system that means a properly documented procedure by which the qualified representatives when we say qualified representatives it generally refers to the team the quality assurance team which consists of experts from various areas who come together and review the change that has been uh, implemented or is being proposed and they try to understand how this change will affect the already approved process or product rather the validated status of the process the product the facilities systems equipments etc the intention here is to determine the need for any action that would ensure and document 
that the system is maintained in a validated state and that the safety and efficacy of the product has not been compromised. Thus, some of the important terminologies in this definition are that it is a formal system by which the qualified representatives review the proposed or actual changes and try to understand whether the validated status is affected in any way. Okay. So again, read for yourself the definition of change control before we proceed. Moving further, now let us look at what is the need for such a change control. Is it really important and what are the benefits of such a change control? Why is change control necessary? Change control is needed to assure that any change proposed or actual does not affect, does not impact product identity, strength, quality, purity or potency. The safety and efficacy of the product which arises from its identity, strength, quality, purity and potency should not be affected. Change control is necessary to assure that the change does not impact the process or the system which has been previously validated. It is also necessary on, because of the regulatory requirements and commitments. For example, the new drug application or the abbreviated new drug application which has been submitted to the regulatory authorities of that particular country contains all details of the systems and procedures that will be applied in the manufacture of the particular product. So whether those regulatory commitments are still being met is necessary to be evaluated. Thus, only those change control procedures will should be approved that will not affect or negate the commitments that have been made to the regulatory agency. The second reason why change control is necessary is to comply with CGMP requirements and as a guidance for change control. Third reason is change control is necessary to provide a single easy to access source of information regarding the changes with respect to audits and inspections annual product reviews and annual reports to FDA. So in case of audits and inspections by internal agencies or by external regulatory agencies, change controls are very, very necessary as they provide an access to the information. Also, whenever annual product reviews are being conducted by the company, then it should be easy to whatever the procedural change has taken place should be easily accessible, which is possible if the change control has been well documented. Similarly, if the FDA of the particular country requires annual reports to be submitted, then these change controls will form a majority of the annual reports that are submitted to the regulatory agencies. Thus, change control is an absolutely necessary part of the functioning of the company with respect to managing the changes that are necessitated after submission of documents such as NDA or ANDA. Change control therefore is necessary to ensure that the product identity, strength, quality, purity, potency is not affected. It is necessary for the compliance with the CGMP requirements of the parent company as well as the parent country as well as the country to which the product will be exported. And it is also necessary from the point of view of submission to regulatory agencies and during inspection. Change control helps to keep up with the five values of safety, 
identity, strength, purity and quality. As we saw in the previous slide, change control should be such that it does not impact the safety, identity, strength, purity and quality of the product. Now, what exactly does this mean? Change control should ensure that the product is safe. Rather, the product is free of side effects when it is used by the consumer. The identity of the product does not change when such a change has been implemented. For example, the product is exactly what the label says and what the associated or secondary packing material says. By strength, we mean the dose. Whatever change has been implemented should not have any effect or change the dose. The product should deliver the right dosage and strength throughout its shelf life. Also, the product should be free from physical, biological and chemical contamination. That is, the product should be pure. Lastly, coming to the quality. Generally, the pharmaceutical manufacturers establish and follow quality systems to help ensure that their product consistently meets the applicable requirements and specifications and there should be no change in the quality systems that have been established. The changes that would be brought about due in the manufacturing process or procedure can be classified into three categories. Major change, minor change and change that does not require any control. What is the significance of this? When we say major change, it refers to a high risk and high impact change that could interrupt the production environment if it is not planned properly. This can lead to uh, and influence the product quality or the process reliability. For example, a major change could be an addition or deletion of the step a unit process or an addition of a new excipient in the process. New manufacturing site, transfer of the product to new manufacturing site could be another reason for uh, that can uh, that could be classified as a major change. Change in the product composition is also a type of major change. Change in the parameters, change in the process parameters or change in the quality of the raw material or inputs is also a major change. Coming to minor change. A minor change is one that has a low impact and low risk. These are uh, unimportant or non-trivial changes that do not occur frequently but are seen occasionally. Okay. Here, uh, example could be replacing the apparatus, one apparatus by another apparatus, replacing the instrument by, uh, of the same by another instrument of the same make and model, changing of the cleansing agent for the floors, change of laundry, introduction of uh, light, new light in the area could be minor changes. Okay. And there are some changes which do not really require any change control because they do not directly or indirectly affect the safety and efficacy of the uh, process or the procedure. For example, change in working time, renovations in the office area, installation of AC in the staff room are not really uh, connected in any way to the quality of the product and therefore need not be documented. What needs to be documented are all types of major changes and all types of minor changes. In case of major changes, sometimes approvals and licenses, new approvals and licenses may be required and revalidation of the process or the product may be necessary. In case of minor changes, amendments to the existing documents, review of the documents and the product after uh, manufacture by this after the minor change and appropriate documentation and authorization is necessary. Okay. Thus, the different types of changes, change controls uh, are include the major change and the minor change. 
where it is a major change such a change will directly affect the product quality or the reliability of the process or maybe the safety and efficacy and therefore requires approvals licenses revalidation minor changes may influence in a very minor way but not necessarily the quality of the product and the major activity here would involve review of documents change in the documents what is the procedure involved in implementing change control whenever a change is proposed firstly the change control form should be filled so the change control form has to be filled by the appropriate person and this has to be circulated to the review team the review team evaluates the effect of the change on the product quality and does a risk assessment once the risk assessment has been performed and it has been confirmed that this change will not affect the safety or quality of the product then the change should be approved by the authority after approval and documentation the change should be implemented after the change has been implemented batches should be manufactured accordingly and evaluated all the documents that have been generated at this stage should be completely filled authorized and stored as a part of the records the manufactured batches with the change whether it is a major change or a minor change should be subjected to trend analysis and the change control should be then evaluated and appropriate statistical techniques should be used in very rare cases of emergency change an emergency change control procedure should be initiated and the same should be documented and the documents should be stored and the product should be subjected to trend analysis this is a sample a very small part of a change control form as you can see here there are several sections section a b c and d section a deals with what is the product and what is the change identification of the change that is proposed details of the change the as you can see the who is requesting the date on which it has been requested following this first step of filling the change control form it then goes to the investigation team who then evaluates the impact of the proposed change on the quality of the, of the product after evaluation of the impact the results the the investigation results and conclusion is uh, recorded and if approved then the change implementation can change can be proposed change can be implemented and this has to be authorized by the appropriate person okay so whatever steps i told you in the previous slide you can see that the uh, filling of the change control form evaluation approval all this forms a part of the change control documentation system and the once completely filled this change control form has to be stored as a part of the records for and should be available for inspection by the regulatory authorities or during or during the annual product reviews or for doing the trend analysis in order to understand in depth the change control and different aspects of change control you can refer the notes that i have uploaded in the classroom or you can read the textbook of industrial pharmacy 2 by dr ashok hazare where the various steps have of change control have been explained as in the form of a flow chart okay now it is seen that such change control uh, requests generally come from the production department where they may request for changes in location or equipment or uh, control process control parameters uh, batch size etc change control may also be initiated by the engineering department for change in equipment or maintenance of the equipment or critical parts of the equipment etc change control may also be initiated by the r&d department for such as change in specifications of the raw materials packaging materials deletion or addition of raw material 
manufacturing steps, environmental conditions, etc. Change control may also be initiated by materials department or quality control department which wishes to uh, change the method of analysis or sampling plan or the hardware of the or software of the analytical instrument etc. Change control may also be initiated by QA department which wishes to change the sampling plan or validation protocol or any other valid reason or by the IT department or even by the cleaning department. Thus, change control in the pharmaceutical industry is a very critical activity that is very very necessary it should be documented and the documents should be available for review as and when required. So with this we have concluded the topic of change control and the next topic that we are going to discuss now is the ISO 9000 series of standards. What is ISO 9000? All of us have heard this terminology. So let us first look at the definition of ISO 9000. ISO 9000 is defined as a set of international standards on quality management and quality assurance developed to help companies effectively document the quality system elements needed to maintain an efficient quality system. Now this is a very long definition and a very complex one. So let us break it down into smaller parts and try to understand this ISO 9000. The very first point to note here that ISO 9000 is not restricted to the pharmaceutical industry. It is applicable across industries across the globe. Okay. So thus ISO 9000 is defined as a set of international standards and what are they related to quality management and quality assurance. What is their function? They have been developed to help the companies to effectively document the quality system elements that are necessary to maintain an effective quality system. Okay. Thus, ISO 9000 helps in strengthening the quality systems of any company. ISO 9000 series is not specific to any one industry and can be applied to organizations of any size. So whether the organization employs 10 employees or 10,000 employees, ISO 9000 C is applicable to all. ISO 9000 can help and what is, what is the advantage of ISO 9000? ISO 9000 can help a company satisfy its customers, meet regulatory requirements and achieve continual improvement. It is, a, it is the first step of a quality system. Okay. So ISO 9000 which came into prominence in the last decade or so is the first step towards quality. Let us now try to understand what does this series of standards contain. The term ISO stands for International Organization for Standardization. And ISO 9000 was first published in 1987 by the International Standards Organization, which is a specialized international agency for standardization. And it is composed of the national standards bodies of more than 160 countries. Thus, the participants in the ISO and those who implement ISO belong to more than 160 countries. These standards first established in 1987 underwent revisions in 2000 and 2008. The most recent, recent version of this ISO 9000 standard is ISO 9000 to, uh, 2015 and ISO 9000 colon 2015, 9001 to the, uh, colon 2015 and these were published in September 2015. ISO 9001 which I have mentioned here deals with the requirements that organizations wishing to meet the standards must fulfill. 
The major difference between ISO 9000 and 9001 is that ISO 9000 gives the definitions, whereas IS, ISO 9000 gives definitions, while ISO 9001 tells how to act, how and why to act. The ISO 9000 family consists of the following four standards. ISO 9001 colon 2015, which consists, uh, which uh, defines the quality management systems and their requirements. ISO 9000 colon 2015, which defines the quality management systems wherein the fundamentals and definitions are given. So like I told you in the previous slide, ISO 9000 contains definitions. ISO 9, 9001 consists of requirements and what are the requirements and what is the action to be taken. ISO 9004, Poland 2018 discusses the quality management aspects from the quality of the organization point of view and it gives points which form the guidance to achieve sustained success or continuous improvement. ISO 19011 colon 2018 lays down the guidelines for auditing of management systems. To know more about these systems, you can, uh, about these ISO series, that is 9001, 9000, 9004 and 19011, you can read the brief write-up that has been given in the textbook of Industrial Pharmacy Part 2 by Dr. Ashok Hazare. ISO 9000 and ISO 9001 are based on the seven quality management principles which have been outlined in this image here. As we go ahead, we will discuss these principles in brief. The seven principles include customer focus, leadership, engagement of people in the process of management of quality, process approach, improvement, evidence-based decision making and relationship management. These seven quality management principles, which we, I just read out to you, provide the basis for performance improvement. And these form the backbone of ISO 9000 and ISO 9001. Whereas ISO 9004 gives a guidance on wider range of objectives of the quality management system. But for our purpose, for the purpose of the subject and syllabus, let us restrict ourselves to the seven principles and go ahead and understand each principle in brief. The first principle, quality management principle as per the ISO 9000 or, 9, or 9001 series is customer focus. Now this indicates under this what we need to know is we need to understand, the company needs to understand the needs of the customers and which customers, the existing customers as well as the future customers. But each company wants to expand its customer base. In order to expand its customer base, it should be able to understand the customers of today and the needs of the customers of tomorrow. The company should be able to align the organizational objectives with these needs and expectations of the customers of today and tomorrow. Not only that, the company must be able to meet the requirements of the customers the company should be able to understand what satisfies the customer, that is measure customer satisfaction. The company should be able to manage customer relationships. The company should aim to not only understand the expectations, but also exceed the customer expectations. Finally, customer feedback is very important. So the company management should learn more about the experience of the customer and his feedback, whether the customer is satisfied or not. Thus, one of the important principles of quality management is focus on the customer. Understand who is your customer today, who will be the customer tomorrow, what the customer expects, what the customer demands, what is the customer's view on quality and meet the customer requirements, manage relationships with these customers and exceed the customer expectation. Finally, customer feedback is 
very very important for continuous improvement in quality so this is the first principle of quality management that is focus on the customer the second important quality management principle is leadership the company should have a leadership that can establish a vision and direction for the organization the leadership should set challenging goals which will excite the employees and motivate them to perform the leader should model organizational should have organizational values and inculcate them and implement them the leader should establish trust the employees should be able to trust the leader which is only then they will follow the guidance of the leader the leader should equip and empower employees to give their best the leader should recognize employee contributions and reward them and the leader should continuously evolve learn more and more and evolve and become a better leader the third management principle is engagement of people that is my people i mean employees ensure that the abilities of the employees are used to the fullest extent their potential is exploited and at the same time the employees are valued these employees should also be accountable for their actions the employees should participate in continual improvement and training programs individual performances and not group performances should be evaluated and encouraged learning and knowledge sharing should be encouraged open discussion of problems and constraints should be carried out so that the employees are free to air their grievances and free to un, uh, free to ex, free to express what problems they are facing in the scenario pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing scenario and they should be these should be Uh, discussed empathized with and the problems should be solved employee involvement in all aspects of quality should be encouraged thus we have looked at the first three principles of quality management principles focus on the customer ensure that there is a good leadership which can lead the team see that the employees are engaged motivated and encouraged the fourth is the process approach which means that all the activities should be broken down into processes and managed very effectively and efficiently activities that are carried out should be measured in terms of the capability to improve quality uh, i the different activities and the link between them should be identified continuous improvement opportunities should be presented and should be encouraged resources should be used effectively for continuous quality improvement and finally learn more about a process view of work and see the uh, understand the process by using various analysis tools the fifth activity or quality management principle is that of improvement continuous improvement is necessary in all aspects so improvement in the organizational performance as a whole and the capabilities of the organization align the improvement activities to quality empowering people to make improvements measuring improvement and quantitating it not only measuring but celebrating improvement to encourage and motivate and as well as learn about newer and approaches for continuous improvement is very very necessary thus improvement is a very important mantra of the quality management coming to evidence based decision making here it is necessary to ensure that the data uh, that is available is accurate and reliable if and if accurate reliable data is available to decision makers then the correct decisions can be taken whatever data is available should be analyzed in a scientifically sound manner appropriate statistical techniques should be employed and based on the data its analysis decisions correct decisions should be made 
data analysis is a very important aspect of decision making but at the same time it should be backed by experience and training thus appropriately qualified personnel and trained personnel who have had experience in dealing with problematic situations or in continuous improving quality should add their practical experience to the analysis of data and finally based on the analysis of the data and practical experience using the appropriate tools decisions for quality improvement should be arrived at the last principle quality management principle is managing relationships relationships with whom let's see suppliers suppliers are a very important aspect of quality raw materials are bought from suppliers equipments are bought from suppliers packaging materials come from suppliers thus the managing the suppliers and maintaining healthy relationships with them is a very important aspect of management of quality identification and selection of suppliers in such a way that costs are man optimized resources are optimized and there is value addition to the product establish relationships in the short run as well as for the long term share expertise resources information and plans with the suppliers vendors partners etc collaborate on improvement activities as well as development activities recognize and appreciate good suppliers learn more about supplier quality how they introduce quality into your raw materials or packaging materials how they maintain quality what is the gmp uh, that is uh, prevalent at their premises and understand the other resources that are necessary for managing the supply chain for raw materials packaging materials finished goods etc thus in conclusion the seven quality management principles if handled successfully if handled efficiently will lead to quality products that can meet as well as exceed the customer expectations and what are those quality management principles one customer focus two leadership three engagement of people four process approach five continuous improvement six evidence based decision making and finally the seventh principle that is relationship management.